Hello, my name is Robert Dean Steele, and this is your daily Bible class or your commentary on the Bible. Now, before we do anything, we're going to pray. So, Father, we thank you today for the Word of God, and we thank you, Lord, today for what we're going to learn today from your Word. We ask your blessing upon it now in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, today we're looking at, of course, um, Luke chapter 11. Now, Jesus gives some really interesting teaching concerning the Pharisees and the lawyers. And he says this. He spoke to a certain Pharisee who asked him to dine in his home, and he sat down. And when the Pharisee saw it, he marveled that he did not wash his hands before dinner. So the context is he's invited to dinner, but Jesus doesn't wash his hands. Hmm. Well, that would not do today, of course, for sure. But it says, now the Lord said, now you Pharisees, what you do is you make outside the cup and clish and dish clean, but your inward part is full of greed and wickedness. He says, you're more concerned about the very fact that I haven't washed my hands when inside your own heart is greed and selfishness. He says, listen, foolish ones, did not he who made the outside also make the inside? Of course, he's giving a spiritual truth, but rather give alms of such things as you have, then indeed all the things will be clean to you. He says, listen, when you do righteous things, he says, this is what makes you clean, not because you wash your hands or you don't wash your hands. But woe to you, Pharisees, for you tithe mint and ruin and all manners of herbs and pass, but pass justice and love for God. These ought you have done without leaving the others undone. He says, you do all these outward things like, you know, herbs and spices and ties, etc. He says, but you forget something thing called justice. And also as well, he says, you leave the love of God out of it. He says, you're, you, you have a form of substance, but you deny the power thereof. He says also, woe to you Pharisees, you love the best seats in the synagogues and greetings in the marketplaces. He says, woe to you scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you are like graves which are not seen and men who walk over them and are not aware. He says, basically, you guys, you, you love all the position and you love all the prestige, but inside you're like unmarked graves that people walk over. That's pretty severe, isn't it? But Jesus knows the heart of these men at the time. They were more concerned about their traditions. They were more concerned about their rules and regulations than they were about, you know, honesty, integrity, justice, you know, and love. He says, then one of the lawyers asked him and said, teacher, you're saying these things, you're approaching us also. He says, you're right, I am. He says, woe to you also, your lawyers, for you load men and women with burdens uh, th that are hard to bear, but you yourselves will not touch those burdens with one of your fingers. He says, you ask all these things of all these people, but you don't do them yourself. James said this, you know, you, uh, you'd say you have faith. Well, you show it by what you do. He says, woe to you. Uh, he says this, you build the tombs of the prophets and your fathers killed them. In fact, you bear witness that you approve the deeds of your fathers, that they killed them indeed, and you build tombs. He says, you build these monuments to the prophets, but you forget the fact that your forefathers did it. And also as well, you would approve them to do it. He says this, in fact, you bear witness that you approve the deeds of, of them. Therefore, he says, the wisdom of God will also says, I will send you apostles and prophets, and some of them they, they will kill and persecute. He says, listen, I sent these apostles and prophets, and some of them will be killed and persecuted, and they will be done by you. He says, and all the blood of the prophets, which was shed from the foundation of the world, may be required of this generation. Jesus knew that they would put him to death, and then those who followed him, they would try to put to death, and some they would do. He says, from the blood of Abel to the blood of Zechariah, who perished between the altar and the temple, yes, I say to you, it will be required of this generation. So Jesus is basically saying, you come across as if you are, you know, benevolent and wise and discerning and broad-minded, but really, you're just as bad as every other previous generation. He says this, woe to you lawyers, for you have taken 
taken away the key of knowledge, which you did not enter in yourself and you hinder those who bring it. He says, listen, you have the key of knowledge, but you won't enter in yourselves and you're actually keeping people from actually finding it. And he said these things to them, the scribes and the Pharisees began to assail him violently and cross examine him with many things, lying in wait for him to seek and to catch him to something that he might say so that they accuse him. So immediately Jesus became the object of their attack and they attacked him violently and they were looking for different ways to trip him up and that would be the assault. Now listen, when you are a religious person and you rely more on your religion than you do the righteousness of God, then what you're literally doing is you're lining yourself up on the side of the accuser. The enemy loves religion. He loves tradition. He loves ceremony because what it does is it draws you away from purity and holiness and a personal relationship. See, God wants us to draw near to him and we draw near to him. Him. And uh, But what happens is if you take the form and you take the ceremony and the tradition and replace it with the personal relationship, it robs you of intimacy with God. That's what Jesus was talking about today. A little thought for you today. Tomorrow, we're going to be looking at Jesus looking at hypocrisy. Oh, I tell you, Jesus is laying it on thick, but he doesn't want us to fall into those traps. My name is Robert Dean Steele. This is your commentary on the Bible or your daily Bible class. You have yourself a great and godly day.